If you like what we're doing in these videos, please consider becoming a patron of MHP at Patreon slash Memory Hole. In the COVID-19 world, one's very biology makes them suspect and potentially guilty until proven innocent by the Western medical cartel and its purported liberating technologies. Once one gets past the false notion that COVID-19 is somehow on par with the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918, it must be concluded that we are in the midst of a vast socioeconomic experiment overseen by technocrats who've been given people's lives and livelihoods as their guinea pigs to test and operationalize their theories. We need a shift to a new system that will allow us to meet the basic needs of every human on the planet, that will live within planetary means, that will be fairer, and that will be focused as its key goal, not on growth per se, but on maximizing human well-being. In their view, the present system can and should be replaced for what they declare to be the greater good. In reality, the banking and financial elites have run the world's economy into a ditch, and they do not intend to relinquish their power. Their idea is to strip everybody of all property, period. That's communism. And then you're going to be giving um, this guaranteed basic income. And if you don't do what the government tells you to do, like get a vaccine or whatever, oh, well, then your guaranteed basic in income will be suspended. And how are you going to eat? All right. Um, and if you eliminate the small businesses, which an, another lockdown is going to do, uh, you're going to have uh, serious unemployment because that they employ 70% of the population. The World Economic Forum's fourth industrial revolution involves wide-scale economic disenfranchisement and impoverishment. These are predicated on human malleability and conformity. To achieve such an end, a mass deception that brings people to their knees, that makes them paranoid and fearful of each other, and increasingly receptive of solutions offered by technology and the state, is central. Along these lines, the response to what we are told is a major pandemic has accelerated the process of transitioning people's self-conception of themselves as individuals into objective things. The deployment of devices such as contact tracing apps are a pivotal point of this transformation. It prompts human beings to regard themselves as potential disease-bearing material appendages of a soulless system, one to which they must, through repeated testing, continually request permission for full inclusion in. A short time ago, I reluctantly took my first COVID test which was required for access to a medical procedure. And in order to view the results, I had to download a smartphone app affiliated with the Florida Department of Health and distributed by Google's Play Store. What's disturbingly instructive about this app, this one is called Healthy Together, is all the things that it is set up to do. If you have the app and you feel sick, you can check your symptoms and find out if you should be tested for COVID-19. The app shows you where you can get tested. After testing, your results are sent to the health department. You can view them in the app and find out what to do next. In addition to distributing private health information, it will monitor others who use the app and alert all parties if someone they've been in contact with tests positive for the coronavirus. <laughs> there's, there's what I call the creepy line. 
and the, the Google policy about a lot of these things is to get right up to the creepy line but not cross it. I would argue that implanting things in your brain is, a, is beyond the creepy line. Mine in particular. Uh, yes, yes. Um, at least for the moment, uh, until the technology gets better. Florida is presently one of 14 U.S. states that have introduced a contact tracing phone app. For now, it's voluntary. But health authorities have declared they want to see a 60% or higher adaptation rate nationwide. Canada, Britain, and Wales have already introduced nationwide contact tracing apps. And their political leaders are encouraging their constituencies to be good citizens by using it. Recognizing the public's concern over data breaches and personal privacy, officials want to assure their constituencies that anonymity is a main feature of the technology. Earlier apps using GPS have now been replaced by utilizing a phone's Bluetooth technology that keeps track of close encounters with other app users. It functions entirely on an anonymized basis. There are no identifiers uh, of your phone, of your number, of your identity, of your address, or even of your location. So fully automated, opt-in technology, not contact tracing, does not in any way, shape, or form uh, uh, provide any of your personal information. As well, the forthcoming Biden administration has major plans for building a nationwide army of COVID contact tracers. And it's almost certain that this type of technology will play a role, possibly a central one. The notion of monitoring each other's health has a number of implications. There's something called mission creep, inherent in many of the tactics proposed to address the corona hysteria and keep us safe. This is especially the case when the perceived danger and urgency of the pandemic are being intertwined with that all too intimate smartphone portal, to which everyone's attention is seemingly bound. The quest for faceless anonymity in the midst of COVID is perhaps fitting, as perpetual mask wearing tends to diminish individuality by all but eliminating facial appearance and expression from everyday personal interactions. Whether one may attend school enter the workplace or a public event, and socialize in person for more than a minute or two will now be determined and regulated by their ever-changing biological profile, a sniffle or temperature over 99.5 Fahrenheit could potentially mean someone has contracted a virus with a 99.8% recovery rate. The major airlines, for example, are now requiring proof of a negative COVID test for travel, and they foresee this becoming proof of vaccination for their services in the future. None of this will be possible without the public's misplaced faith in what many of us still perceive as a functioning and trustworthy system, that political and corporate leaders are watching out for our best interests. When, in fact, through the pursuit of money and power, and more specifically, the 100-year-old globalist ambition of the universal feudalism otherwise known as communism, that very system is engineered to do the exact opposite. If you like what we're doing in these videos, please consider becoming a patron of MHP at Patreon slash Memory Hole. For Memory Hole Blog Report and MemoryHoleBlog.org, this is James Tracy. <laughs>